Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It's Saturday morning, it's probably about nine o'clock and we're in for a beautiful day today. The sun is out, the skies are blue, so you know what that means. I'm in a pair of shorts and my legs are out. So spring is definitely in the air. Now today is gonna to be the March 2024 plot tour. Now I feel like over the last four months, everything's been a little bit brown, a little bit dead, and everything's been in its dormant stages. So it's really nice to see everything is finally waking up. Now because of that there is so much going on in the garden and I've got lots to show you so come on I think we just need to jump straight into it and get going with this plot tour so come on I'll meet you at the top of the garden. That sun is beautiful today but it might be a little bit glary in just a few of the shots so you might have to bear with that just for today but look everything is looking a little bit more green down here we've got a lot more growth going on now that plot over there is also mine so that's my poly house and I've got a fruit cage so we'll pop over there in just a moment but yes this is a view from at the top of the plot So at the top of my plot, I've got these two compost bins. Now we did empty this one out probably a few months back. So I started filling that up again. And then over on the right hand side, I've still got loads of compost in there. So that should see us through at least until the end of spring, maybe the beginning of summer. And that will help us save on a little bit of money when it comes to the compost. And then just over here, we've got the Fiesta apple tree and already it's starting to break out into leaf. So hopefully within the next month or so, we should start to get the blossom and hopefully we'll get quite a few apples on this. Now we haven't had a huge amount in the past because we have had a problem with the codlin moth. So I've brought some pheromone traps this year. We don't need to hang them up until April, but hopefully that will help stop some of that damage to the apples. And then just underneath, we have got a few little flowers in here. So most of that is poached eggplant, but we've got a couple of little foxgloves as well. And I'm hoping that we're going to get loads of marigolds start to self-seed because it was full of beautiful marigolds last year. Now I do need to get in there and give it just a little bit of a weed because we have got some grass growing. And then yes, next month we will set those pheromone traps to stop that codlin moth. Here's my rhubarb crowns. I've probably got anywhere between 10 to 12 in total and we get absolutely tons of the stuff from April until July when we do stop harvesting it. But if you remember in the last plot tour video, these were probably what, five inches tall maybe? So they have put on so much growth over the last four weeks. So yes, I'm definitely looking forward to having some rhubarb and custard. And then we've also got a couple of trees in here. So we've got a brambly apple tree, but we did have a problem with the codlin moth. So I will be sticking some pheromone traps on that one as well and then we've got a little pear tree as well now these pear trees are really big and juicy we just really do not get many on there i'm not too sure on the variety as these two trees were already on this plot when i took it over now i have noticed that one of the rhubarbs have started to flower so i'll take you in for a little closer look so this here is a rhubarb flower and as you can see it's started to send off quite a few little spikes now we don't want the energy to go in to making the flowers and then the seeds so what you really want to do is you just want to snap these off as soon as possible just to make sure that all of that energy is going into the crown and producing your lovely rhubarb stalks rather than these funny looking flowers now if you did transplant one of your rhubarbs last year then it might well send out these flower spikes but honestly don't worry too much because after a couple of years, they will settle down and you won't have half as many spikes coming from your plant. But yes, do make sure you're on top of them, removing these flower spikes. So if you remember in previous videos, I had one, two, three beds of onions in here, but for some reason, they all seem to have disappeared. They came up in October, November beautifully, but yeah, I don't know where they've gone to. So I really must try and plant out some more onion sets over the next couple of weeks. But down here, we have got one, two, three rows of garlic and they've done absolutely wonderfully. Last year, I had a really bad garlic and onion harvest. So I have overcompensated this year because I need to make sure I I've got those staples in my life. But yes, these garlic down here are coming on perfectly. Down here, we have got our second allium bed, which is full of garlic and full of shallots. So we've got five rows of garlic in this bed. Then we've got quite a few shallots in here, which are now starting to break through. It shouldn't be long before they start splitting. And then we've got even more garlic down in this bed down here. So I have really compensated for the garlic because I didn't get any last year and I don't want that to happen again. And then just at the back there, you can see some of those tulips are already starting to come out. So let's go take a closer look. 
just a few of the tulips are now starting to form. We've got pinks, we've got yellows, we've got all sorts down here. And all of those beautiful little heads are now starting to form. So it shouldn't be too long and this whole bed will be full of beautiful colour. Here we have got some of the pine berries. Now they haven't really sprung into life with any of the flowers just yet, but these are a lot earlier than the strawberries, so it shouldn't be too long. As you can see, they've put out loads of runners. They can be a little bit of a thug, these plants, but they're absolutely beautiful. A lot of people say that they're like a strawberry that tastes like a pineapple, so I would certainly get a few of these. You don't need many because they are a thug and they're exactly like a strawberry, but they come out white. But yeah, hopefully it won't be too long before we start to see some dainty little flowers. We have got the only gooseberry bush that isn't in the fruit cage because it was a bit of a beast, but they're like marbles. They're huge berries and they're one of the earliest berries that we get down here on the plot. And as you can see, we've already got beautiful lime green shoots starting to appear. And then just at the back there, that is all alliums. Now I really should have tried to dig up some of those bulbs back in the autumn time because a lot of them are coming up blind and we're not getting any flowers. So that's something to do next year and we'll just have to make do for now. We've got the raised bed that we built probably about a month ago with some of the leftover cladding that we had from the shed repair and I've popped this underneath the pear tree Now I've had a little look and already some of those leaves and blossoms are already starting to bud out so it shouldn't be too long before we've got beautiful pear blossom and we get loads of pears off this tree every year. I'm not 100% on the variety because it was already here but it might be a concord or a conference because they are quite similar in the way that they look but in this bed I'm thinking about putting some dahlias and some other summer flowering plants to just to help attract some of those pollinators into the garden. And then down underneath the pear tree, here I've got one of my smaller ponds. I've got three in total, but this did need a little bit of a clear out and I think I've left it a little bit too late. So we haven't got any frog spawn in here, but I will show you some of the frog spawn that we've got in the other two ponds a little bit later on. Hopefully the frogs will chill out in here over the summer, even if we don't get anything else. So not much going on in these raised beds just at the moment. We have sown some carrots over in the far right hand side, but we haven't got anything down here in the left hand side just yet. Now I do like to grow my carrots in here because they do do really well and it seems to stop the carrot fly from finding them because of those tall sides. So yes, we will sow some more carrots in the next few couple of weeks. Oh, and we mustn't forget the little garlic down in this corner and they seem to be coming on quite nicely only given that they were probably planted what two months ago but yeah they're quite spindly at the moment but it won't be too long before they start to beef up a little bit. So not much going on in this bed we've got a few little daffodils in the corner down there which are looking nice and pretty and I think we've got a little foxglove just in there but the plan is to fill this with some asparagus crowns. Now they are on order but I got a message from Dobby's I think it was just yesterday saying that they'll probably be dispatched around the 17th of April and I did want to get them in in April so hopefully they won't be delayed anymore and then I really must give down here a good old weed. I have actually got another bed in there down there were the artichokes and then down here never really seems to get used so I'm going to give that a real good weed out and think about what we can start planting in there this year. We did put some green manure in those two so they're ready to use whenever we need to and then this bed was full of the parsnips. Now I always grow way too many parsnips so if you remember last year I actually let them grow because they can reach a good six seven feet tall sometimes and I found all sorts of insects in there from butterflies, bees and even a beautiful rose chafer and then down here we've just got some of the manure that I had left over and I need to think about what we can put in there because it will need to be something quite hungry. So we haven't got anything going on in that bed there, so we need to think about what we're going to plant, maybe some beetroot. And then in this bed, last weekend, we sowed a load of peas in here. Now they are an early pea called Oscar, and they only grow to, what, 75 centimetres tall. So we made a little hedge here out of some of the twigs and pruning material that we had from cutting the tree back, back in the winter. And that will be a perfect little trellis for those peas to start growing up.
Excuse the squintiness, it's a little bit bright today, but we've got some new neighbours, so it might get a little bit noisy down here, but now we've got the new mic, I'm hoping it's not going to be too bad. So we're going to carry on filming and we'll see how it goes. Just look at these beautiful tulips that we've got down here. So they are miniature ones and you do find that they bloom a lot earlier than your standard tulips, but they're absolutely stunning. I think my favorite ones are the pale buttery yellow with the bright yellow center. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Current corner is slowly coming into life. So this is the red current here and that is the first one always to burst its bud. Then we've got the pink current down here, which is always second. And then lastly down here, which is still all twiggy, we've got the white current. But yes, it shouldn't be too long before we start getting those dangly jewel berries. And then down in this corner, we've got the old Woolerton Hall rose. It's a David Austin rose. It's a climber. And the plan is to get it growing through all of this trellis. But it's put on so much growth. I think I planted this two years ago. So last year was its first to really sprawl. And this is its second. And yes, just look at all of those beautiful new shoots. Everything is looking as it should be in the strawberry cage at the moment. I have even noticed that a couple of these have got some really small berries already starting to form, which is quite early for these guys, as I wouldn't expect to be picking any berries until sort of late May, early June time. But I will give these a little bit of a feed with some chicken manure pellets. And yeah, it won't be too long before we start thinking about harvesting these guys. Still nothing going on in this bed at the moment. It does get a lot of shade, so I need to think about what we're going to pop in there soon but as we move down we've got some beautiful flowers starting to form so down here we've got some tulips and as you can see we've got that deep purple head already starting to form and I think I've also got some orange ones in here just to give that a little bit of a clash and then as we move down we have got some of the alliums so these won't flower until sort of May time late May and we've got some blues some whites got some purple as well we've also got the Schubertii which is a really strange forming allium which looks beautiful once it's been dried out so we'll have to wait a little bit longer for these guys to start flowering and then as we move down to the final box we've got some more beautiful tulips so we've got loads in here so I am hoping to have some cut flowers to take home and I can already see some purples and pinks starting to appear so hopefully it won't be too long before these boxes are full of beautiful colour down on the plot. And we'll have some lovely flowers to take home as well. Down here we've got the potato pots, which I've made using some of the old water butts that I've collected over the years. And they're fantastic. But we haven't popped anything in here just yet, but I have got the potatoes. They are chitting inside the shed. They just need a little bit of light until they start to form these beautiful little shoots and then hopefully in the next few weeks we should be able to start planting them out just look how beautiful that creamy polyantha is with that bright yellow center it's absolutely gorgeous but we've got all sorts starting to flower in here we've got some of the pink forget-me-nots which are out in bloom the hellebores which are now starting to go over and i've even found a couple of the snakehead fertilities which are absolutely stunning and they do start to form quite nice little clumps down here in the wildlife area I do need to get in here and just give it a little bit of a tidy up with some of the brambles just so some of these flowers have got a little bit more space to grow. Now I believe this is called a Brunnera and it's called Frosty Jack because of its beautiful foliage so it looks like it's got a slight frost on there but it hasn't. That is just the colour of its leaves and then it has these blue dainty little flowers that's a little similar to a forget-me-not. I absolutely love this especially when it starts to sprawl. We've got the clematis here. Now I've got this growing over an arch and it's already coming back into life. Now this has beautiful, really pink, vibrant pink petals, only four with a really fuzzy center. But as you can see, all this is dangling down at the moment. So I am just gonna try and tie this back into the trellis a little bit. The pond is definitely starting to spring back into life. So I've already found the water boatmen are in here. Uh, the pond skaters have come back and we've also got that big clump of frog spawn in the middle there. Now I need that sun to come out so that I can get a bit of better footage for you so that you can see it. But the iris is springing back into life. We've got the mint, we've got the forget-me-not and also the water lily is starting to send some leaves up above the water level. And I'm quite happy to see that the Saracena has survived. So it's this plant with the tube that eats the flies now it doesn't really like frost but it seems to have done quite well in this pond so yeah there's going to be so much more going on here soon we get newts we get dragonflies we get all sorts so stay tuned for lots of pond updates
little alpine plant that we built with the barbecue is all looking quite nice bearing in mind that it's just sat here over winter now i'm hoping that these alpines will soon start to flower but it's nice to see that the little simpaverms are starting to spread especially those purple ones now we've got the plants over in hospital corner so we've got the yew tree just down here we've got some roses we've got buddleia achillea we have got all sorts and even down here we've got the christmas tree from christmas so i really must think about what i'm going to do with that that probably needs a good potting up but we've also got some dogwoods down here the japonica we've got some roses at the back we've got some cherry trees some more buddleia honestly we have got all sorts down here but i really need to start finding some homes for these guys and planting them out down here is the first pond that I ever built. It's really little diddly pond, but we've got two clumps of frog spawn in here. Now, again, because that sun isn't out, it's not great footage. You can't really see it, but they are starting to form. So hopefully it won't be too long before we've got lots of little tadpoles swimming around in here. So we're now inside the poly house and we've got lots going on in here from cuttings to seedlings starting to germinate. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of an update of what's going on in here at the moment. So down here we have got a few of the flowers that we sowed just a couple of weeks ago. So in here, this bright pink, that is the amaranthus. Then we have got some of the corn flower. We've got some peony poppies, which are really diddly little seedlings there. In here we've got some of the sunflower. And then finally, we have got some of the Californian poppies and they seem to be doing really well in there. So, yep, we'll give these a little bit of a water in just a moment. And then as we come down, we have got some of the cuttings in here. So we've got some rosemary. They're ready to definitely pot on because they've got lots of new shoots in on there. And some of them are already starting to flower. And then up here, we have got some of the red currant bushes. So I took some cuttings of these back in the autumn time and they've taken root, as you can see because we've got that bright green shoot already starting to appear. Then down here we have got some of the pine berries. Now I did have six in here, but I've just given a few to the new neighbours um, just as a little welcoming, welcoming present down onto the plot. Then as we move along, these are the Coreopsis. Now I'm hoping some of these are going to be alive. I can see some green down in the centre, but I mean they are looking a little bit gnarly on top. So we might try and get these planted out. At the back we've got some Simpaverniums. I don't know whether I'm going to try and sell these down at a car boot or whether we're going to do a little bit of a project with those. And then down here we have got some of the foxgloves, which I didn't actually prick out into their own pots. So they are still quite diddly, but we will try and plant them out into the flower garden. And this is the perennial wallflower, which is definitely seen better days so I think I'm gonna chuck this in the compost and I will take a few more cuttings from my nan's garden because they done really well and they are beautiful flowers on there and then down here we have got the Alba Fox gloves so these are white and I'm hoping that these will really pop in the flower garden because we've got so much color down there I think the white will really help and then as we move along we've got some of the polyanthers which again have seen better days I either need to plant these out or give them away and then we've got some more seedlings. Now, I haven't seen anything really pop up in here. Oh, i am tell a lie. We've got a tiny little geum, which is starting to sprout. And it looks like we've got one of the sunflower Maximilani, which is also starting to sprout. But I did sow quite a few seeds in there. So I was expecting a little bit more. Then as we move towards the back here, we've got a few of the gooseberry plants. I think a couple of those are starting to sprout, which means that they've definitely taken root. We've got an astilby back here. We've got some of the dogwoods. So these are really easy cuttings to take, which we took back in September, October time. And they've already got new shoots starting to form on those. And then finally, as we come down here, we've got some more of the seedlings. So a lot of these are brassicas. We have got the cabbage, cabisse. We've got tender stem broccoli. We've also got some sprouts called Igor. And then finally, we're trying some onions from seeds for the first time this year. Now, I wish I'd try um, sowed these a little bit earlier because I've only done those probably in the last three weeks, which seems a little bit late, but we will see how we get on. And then at the back here, we have got a couple of astilbies, which are now starting to sprout back into life. And then finally here, we've got some of the grapevines that we took some cuttings off. And again, I can see some of those buds are starting to burst. So I'll probably need to pop these up and either give these away or we will take these down to the car boot to try and flog. So yeah, we have got lots going on in here at the moment. A lot of this does need to be planted out 
or pot it up into its own pot and then I'll have a lot more space for some more seedlings down here. So not much going on in these beds at the moment. We've got some elephant garlic in this bed and then underneath that pile of hay we have got a dahlia but it's going to be a little while before we start seeing that guy. So I do need to think about what we're going to be planting out in these beds. I am thinking about putting a little bit of a netting and cage over these and using these as the brassica beds. Not a huge amount going on in these beds at the moment. Now we did have some broad beans in this far bed over there, but I think that the slugs and the snails and also some of the frosts really attacked them and it didn't like it too much. So they have started to die back. So we'll have to think about sowing some more of those. In this bed, we've got the uh, runner beans. So if you leave the roots in there, sometimes they will sprout back because they are a perennial plant, but we did have quite a hard frost this year, but we'll see if they do come back this year. And then finally, we We've got the bed at the back here now i do want to grow some sunflowers in there but if you remember last weekend somebody gave us three grapevines down here so we've planted them up in the hope that they'll uh, climb quite nicely over that fruit cage and then finally just at the back we've got a couple of the raised beds a couple of kale in one of them that, that really need to come out but i'm thinking some beetroot and also some potatoes in the far left hand side raised bed because that's a brand new bed that we only made what a couple of months back so yeah there's still plenty of work to do down in this corner not a huge amount going on inside the fruit cage at the moment but everything is starting to spring back into life we did go in there what probably about three four weeks ago and we cut back those raspberry canes but we've got blueberries gooseberries red currants and we've even got a grape in here so we've still got a few more months before we start reaping the wards of the fruit cage down in the decorative flower area everything is springing back into life we have got foxgloves achillea uh, forget-me-nots daffodils green aconite we've got some foxgloves the poached eggplant which seems to be spreading all over the place we've also got some dahlias in here rudabecchias uh, some echinacea but we won't see those for a few months just yet and look just down here we've got absolutely forests of the poached eggplant and also the nigella then we've got the lavender now i did lose a couple of these because the grass and some of that poached eggplant did drown them out so i do want to get in here and give it a little bit of a weed over and then last weekend if you remember we gave this a little bit of a see into because this looked exactly like all of that uh, poached eggplant and the and the nigella so we're giving it a tidy up and over here we've now got a hydrangea at the far back we've got some roses we've got some of the uh, napina and we've also got a few little bulbs now starting to spring up the sedum gave that a good old hack back last weekend and you can see all of that fresh growth from down at the base and then in this little pot just up here we've got a few spring bulbs which we haven't yet got any blooms on just yet but it won't be too long before all of this area is full of colour. So finally this is the view from the other end of my allotment. So that is all we've got time for today, folks. That was the March 2024 plot tour. Now, I did have a couple of technical difficulties for in this film. So one, I've got two mics. And the problem is, if you leave it open, the other mic is also picking up the sound. And I did leave it open. And now that I've got new neighbours, it was picking up quite a bit of what they were saying. So I have had to reshoot a couple of the videos where it was really bad. So apologies. Hopefully, next video, the audio will be a lot better. And then also, I brought a gimbal and I didn't realise how much battery it would need, so that ran out halfway through. So apologies if you noticed that it was lovely smooth filming, and then suddenly it went a little bit shaky. So hopefully next time round we will be a little bit better, because it's all a little bit of a learning curve at the moment. Now I'm not too sure when you're going to see this video because I've got my little sister down from Manchester for the weekend so we're going to be going out and about and doing some little bits and pieces over the next few days so hopefully you'll see this at some point during the week but don't worry guys hopefully next weekend will be a beautiful one and I'll be back down here on the plot with another little adventure. I hope you have a lovely week ahead of you and I'll see you all very soon so take care guys I'll see you later bye bye.